Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last episode, we learned what had become of the missing Seekers. Lord Seeker Lucius had betrayed the Order and was slowly getting each Seeker killed so that he could bring about the end of the world and have a pure new beginning. It was all all very, very strange, demented stuff. Now then, as I mentioned at the end of last episode, we are going to go check out one of the little side areas. The, oh, okay, okay, random disembodied voice, good for you. Um, but yes, we're going to go check out one of the side areas. Before I do, though, uh, hello there, I was, we got some Grey Wardens hanging out. Okay, presumably they're you know, delivering missives or something of the like. Before I go... We don't have the strength of treaties to judge a true Grey Warden. Heroes, then. Saved us all a while back. A sad lot, their lives. Can't get much sadder. Hmm, that it is. Uh, a Grey Warden's life is a very sad one indeed. Now then, um, did I... Did I complete a quest for you? Good, Inquisitor. I am glad that issue has been resolved. Hey, good stuff. Uh, are we stocked well? What is your evaluation of our supplies? We are groaning with resources. A reflection of your competence and inspiration. Good stuff. As you were. Of course, Inquisitor. Lovely jubbly. Let me just pick these. And you know what? I'm going I'm to fill up my potions whilst I'm here. No, that wasn't what I wanted. I just want to pick the flowers. I don't want to grow new ones. Although, to be fair, I don't think I need any more blood lotus. I'm pretty sure. God, it's something like Vandal Arias that I need now. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to check that. I'm going to check what I need for uh, upgrading. And if it's stuff that I can grow, then I think it's high time we plant new flowers. In the garden. Whee! Not trying to step on your toes, you know. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we've fully upgraded the healing potions. Yes. And it's the healing mist. Yep, Vandal, Aria, and Felendaris. Okay. Yep, Vandalaria and Felandaris. Okay, if if I can grow either of those in the garden, then it's high time we plant them. You're good, as are you. Right, bull and background to iron ore. Good stuff. Now, the, the side area in question that we're going to be focusing on today, if you remember, in the Emerald Graves, I believe it was, we met Tavern, who was the first of the Clan of Dalish Elves in the Exalted Plains. He was looking at some ruins, and he did say that if he had any news, he would send us a letter. I do believe such a letter has arrived. Now, where would... It was Vandal Aria, right? I'm pretty sure, at least. Do we have... We do have Felandaris. Aha! Okay. In that case, we'll plant three... Three Vandal Arias. And three Felandaris. I think that makes sense. Grow little plants. Grow quickly. I need the upgrades. Felandaris. Back. And lastly. No, no, no. This, this one. This one. This one, please. Thank you. These, these plant pots can be so finicky sometimes. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Lovely jubbly. Oh, pardon me. Mind the wall, line or... Now 
then we should have everyone back on the war table. Any gossip? No. Boo. Josephine, have more gossip for me. You're the diplomat. You should be collecting all of the gossip. You speak to everyone. And then Cullen, thank you for the money. And over here, House Am Amladaris. There we go. A quiet message arrived from House Amladaris today. Considering the speed of the response, it seems hard to believe the family had no knowledge of what Dorian found in the book. I wonder how long they've sat upon the secret, wondering if it might someday come to light. Liliana. The quiet message. My dear Inquisitor, we are most appreciative of the information you provided. How scandalous to think there might be any connection between our house and those fiends of legend. It's not true, of course, and to reassure you on that point, I intend to dedicate my family toward helping the Inquisition in its righteous struggle. Yours in faith, Magister Irian of House Amladaris. Thank you kindly, sir. And the Serpent of Navarra. Inquisitor. I will admit when your ambassador first approached me with the claims regarding Varelius, I was unconvinced. Indeed, I did not heed the evidence even when it was presented. It was only when one of your mages, an apostate named Sidoni, managed to drive the clouds from my mind that I finally realised the spell I had been under. Varelius has been imprisoned, and we will be on the lookout for any further efforts by these cultists to infiltrate my nation. Navara is most grateful. King Marcus Pentagast. Hey, good job, Josephine. Very good job. Now then, I'm gonna figure out where I'm sending everyone. Be right back. Okie doke. First things first. Alliances observing the deadlock. It was to be expected in the wake of so many important deaths and the rise of the Inquisition, several noble houses are attempting to spur their fortunes by crafting an alliance of their own. For now, they seem mired in arguments of seniority. It will be a long time before any of them threaten our standing. Uh, Josephine says, I suggest someone be offered as an ambassador of the Herald, not the Inquisition, if only to let them know, in a non-threatening way, that we are watching. Liliana says, let them squabble on their own. Poking them at this point is wasted energy. And Cullen says, I say invite them to observe our soldiers' training to show that we are not a heret that we are not heretical outlaws. Um Well they're trying to craft alliances. Oh, are they I think I may have misread this. They're crafting alliances with each other, not with us. Um Here's the thing, there doesn't seem to be any indication that they're trying to craft alliances to take us down. They're doing this for their own fortunes, not to take down the Inquisition. So this seems a little superfluous. And again, if, if it's just them trying to make money, why do we need to let them know that I'm watching? No, let's just leave them be. Inquisitor. Leave them on their own. Why not? Truth or dare, the end game. Ambassador Montillier. We have never met, but I believe you have, through discreet means, saved me from a most disagreeable connection. As I dislike being indebted to anyone, I shall endeavour to repay you with an- with- hmm? Oh, sorry. I thought, for some reason I was like, new- new item, as in an object. No, news item, a piece of gossip. As I dislike being indebted to anyone, I shall endeavour to repay you with a news item of some interest. Were you aware that the Grand Duchess of Lydes recently paid a visit to Lake Celestine? Indeed, she stayed an entire fortnight as a guest of Duke Alvin Blanchard of Valmontin. In light of her other connections and the curious amounts of coin which spread across the region in the aftermath, you may wish to pay him a call. Sincerely, Duke Valère Fontaine. Cullen is not taking part. Liliana would have suggested, send our agents in. We can expose his connections to Florian for all the world to see. 
And Josephine says, if Duke Blanchard was cons was conspiring with Florian, the Imperial Court would like to know. Again, this is this is addressed to Josephine. Let's let her deal with it. Inquisitor. And once again, I have nothing for Colin. So, buddy, again, just just make me some money, please make me some money. There you go. Thank you, bud. All right. Okay. Now then, we want to be over here. Investigate Elven Ruins. Inquisitor, we have made progress at Dinan Hanin, the Tomb of the Emerald Knights. The structure appears more extensive than we had thought. As my keeper was not interested in this endeavour, perhaps the Inquisition might be willing to aid us. I would hate to return home empty-handed. I trust the spirit of cooperation would benefit us both. Besides, it's rather exciting. I imagine the place must pique your curiosity as well, Tavin, and the only thing we can do is use forces. A few of our soldiers are scouting nearby. We can divert them to the elves' location. Fingers crossed we're sending word, hey, we're going to be sending soldiers to help you out. Please don't be afraid. Lots of love, the Inquisitor. A few of our soldiers met with the elves at Dinan Hanin the elven ruins, ruins in the Emerald Graves. Their leader, Taven, wishes to work with us as a sign of cooperation between the Inquisition and his clan. However, some of his party are wary of our presence and the Inquisition's intentions. Our interest in strengthening our relationship with the Dalish would appear more genuine if you met with them in person. Cullen. Thank you, and we can, we can head there. Right now, let's fast travel. Okay, considering we're going to Elven Ruins, I doubt Sarah would be appropriate. Um, you know what, let's go Blackwall, Coal, and Solus. There we go. We haven't taken Blackwall out in a while. We have our Elven expert in Solus, and I'd, I just like Coal, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, and oh my god, buddy, 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 your legs, there you go, oh my god, it always freaks me out, Cole, Cole, why do you always do this? When we come to the Emerald Graves, why do you always do this? It scares the life out of me. We could, we could just fast travel there, there we go. And that, that ain't good. It's Taven's party. Looks like they tried to fight back, but most were unarmed. Poor buggers. Never stood a chance. There should be Inquisition soldiers here. There should be. There should be, and they are not here. Oh, they... That, that is incredibly sad. We are gonna... I, I think Einar would definitely be making a, a mental note of we have to go back to his clan and let them know. He was the Keeper's first, after all. He was an integral part of the clan. And we, we shouldn't send a letter. We should do that in person. That'd be the polite thing to do, at least. Ooh, look at this. Oh, well, there are the soldiers. These are our men. Well, it it's good to know that we didn't send racists to meet the Dalish and they killed them. No, some, something else clearly happened here. Oh, look, look at these statues. Look at how they glisten. Again, I, Ainor would be making making some rough sketches to send back to her own keeper. Excuse me. The Emerald Knights. Curse the past, the place where lies were born. For beneath their sun are people fall. The lands their lady once bestowed, now stolen in her name. So when these words are read, we shall be gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Dalish were promised this place, and the humans said, no, we're going to take it back. It's ours now. Get wrecked. Hello? Oh. Uh, I want the rest of that seal. Okay. Hi. You're right. Oh, oh. And then spinny spin. <laughs> Get on the ground. <laughs> nice. 
Okay, uh, you, excuse me. Oh, I saw that. I, d I see the big boy over there. No, thank you. Who am I fighting? Where am I going? What's happening? Ex excuse me. Excuse me, stop pinging me with arrows. It's very annoying. A black roll. Where's the enemy? What's going on? Flip it. Guys, guys, we need to be... We need to be on the same page here. I'm, I'm going to blame the uh, the fact that... I, I keep calling him Blackpool. That's not his name. Rainier, there we go. I'm I'm going to blame the uh, the lack of cohesion on the uh, on the Rainier reveal. That's why the party's kind of a little off. It's clearly that everyone's getting used to the fact that Blackpool isn't Blackpool. Anyone else drop anything? Anything nice for my pockets? Okay, no. And did... I, I can't see a big boy, so I'm like, did they... Did Oh no, they didn't kill him. They didn't kill him, they left that for me. Thanks. So polite of you, leaving me the big bugger. Excuse me. Excuse me. Get back. Oh, can we scream? I know. There we go. And got up. Girl, why are you up there? Let's take him out. There we go. What did you have? Emerald seal. Maybe we can figure out what they were after. Well, they were probably after this. Emerald seal. This is one part of some kind of ceramic Dalish seal. Corypheus' men had part of a seal. Do they even know what it opens? The elves didn't have to die. Oh, that makes me sad. Cole just providing a heartbreaking insight. This this is why I bring Cole around. I, I want to feel pain. I want my soul to break every two minutes. Hello? Anyone? Oh, look at that. Look at that. And I will say that looks... It looks a little bit more human. But then again, we, we don't know what elven architecture looked like. Maybe the humans were inspired by elven art. So, ooh. The Emerald Knights. Cry for the past. Only there does glory dwell. For here the bow was strung. The sword bequeathed, the vows sworn. So glory was born within the hearts of the elves. The Emerald Knights. They once patrolled the borders of the Dales, protecting the elven people. The Dalish saw them as romantic heroes. The Chantry called them ruthless butchers. I suspect both sides have some element of truth. Hmm, that's that's fair. I Ainur wouldn't disagree with that. I've I've said before, Ainur Ainur is a moderate in most of her views. Um, t she understands that there will have been some Dalish or t some elves. I'm just... <laughs> nice. Excellent. Defy physics. No, that... I was like, is there a secret passage down there? Oh, that... The wall is like you broke the sacred boxes. <laughs> How could you? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realise they were sacred. My apologies. Um, but yeah, as as I was saying, Ainur acknowledges that there will have been some elves that behaved like bandits and, you know, weren't weren't welcoming, weren't weren't decent people. You know, the the elves were not completely innocent in their downfall. They did have a hand in it. But the Chantry went too far. That's that's kind of her opinion. Yes, we we did we probably did some stuff that warranted, you know, getting checked, but you didn't have to exterminate us in the way that you did. Hello. You're right. Ooh. Yeah, I I know. I know. Pim the area. Now in in a minute, we're dealing with an assassin right now. 
Fuck him. There we go. You're coming with me. Aha. The second seal. Good stuff. What else is there? Lovely. Uh, we, we don't really need the supply cache. We're fine. The Emerald Knights. Sing for the past, where rest those who came before. For each night a seed was sown, roots twisting with their brothers and sisters. So the forest grew, a reflection of our might. Oh, this is all... Again, such, such wonders we're seeing. These beautiful, ornate statues that have been untouched, that have gone unmolested from, you know, Chantry forces trying to destroy elven art. It's, it's beautiful. It's really quite beautiful. It's a pity that the rest of Ainur's clan won't be able to see it. Excuse me. Uh, can we... Can we spin this quickly? That's right, into the fire. And guard up if you please. There we go. Got a scream. Go scream there. Next. Hey. Oi. Oi. Sir. Sir, no. Sir, no. Get that. Okay, where did- stop running away! No running away! Where are you running off to? S seriously, sir, yeah. sir, where are you going? Uh, sir, are you alright? I mean, clearly you're not, you're dead, but... Flipping it, he- he properly did not want to die. He's like, nope. <laughs> I'll run away and I'll keep running. Oh, you can't outrun the Inquisition. You can't outrun us. And a yoink, thank you kindly. And, ooh, hello. Our Lathan, part one. Before the ages were named or numbered, our people were glorious and eternal and never changing. Like the great oak tree, they were constant in their traditions, strong in their roots and ever reaching for the sky. They felt no need to rush when life was endless. They worshipped their gods for months at a time. Decisions came after decades of debate, and an introduction could last for years. From time to time, our ancestors would drift into centuries-long slumber, but this was not death, for we know they wandered the Fade in dreams. In those ages, our people called all the land Elvenan, which in the old language means place of our people. And at the centre of the world stood the giant city of Arlathan, a place of knowledge and debate, where the best of the ancient elves would go to trade knowledge, greet old friends, and settle disputes that had gone on for millennia. But while our ancestors were caught up in the forever cycle of ages, drifting through life at what we today would consider an intolerable pace, the world outside the lush forests and ancient trees was changing. The humans first arrived from Parvolan to the north, called Shemlin, or Quicklings by the ancients, the humans were pitiful creatures whose lives blinked by in an instant. When they first met the elves, the humans were brash and warlike, quick to anger and quick to fight, with no patience for the unhurried pace of elven diplomacy. But the humans brought worse things than war with them. Our ancestors proved susceptible to human diseases, and for the first time in history, elves died of natural causes. What's more, those elves who spent time bartering and negotiating with humans found themselves aging, tainted by the humans' brash and impatient lives. Many believed that the ancient gods had judged them unworthy of their long lives and cast them down among the quicklings. Our ancestors came to look upon the humans as parasites, which I understand is similar to the way the humans see our people in the cities. The ancient elves immediately moved to close Elvenan off from the humans for fear that this quickening effect could crumble the civilization. 
the fall of Althathan, as told by Gishrel, keeper of the Ralafarian clan of the Dalish elves. I... I will say, Ainor thinks this is a very pretty story. I don't think she believes it to be true. As I said, she's a moderate. The ancient elves, in all of the stories, they, they're always portrayed as like, oh, they did nothing wrong. They were living their lives in peace. And the humans came. And the humans were giant dicks. And everything was their fault. It reeks of propaganda. It reeks of propaganda. The thing about elves being immortal, I, I don't know if Ainor necessarily believes that. She's seen no proof of it. Um... Uh, like like I said, it's a very pretty story. It's a very pretty story, but it just, it feels like so much propaganda. Maybe the elves were immortal. She doesn't know. She can't say for certain, but I, I, I think she does, she does hear tales like that. And I, I think she is a wee bit skeptical. She doesn't inherently believe those claims of elven immortality. Oh, hello there, big boy. You're right. Get out. Oh, Lord. Flipping it. I know. Get in there, girl. Get in there. Stun him. Oh, he's flipping it. What's happening? What's happening? Where am I? The camera's spin. There we go. Flipping it. Flippin' heck. A yoink, three out of nine. Good stuff. Okay, this looks like the way forwards. Again, let's let's fully explore. That way we won't have to backtrack. Oh, hello. There's something. I could have missed you. Uh, just, just deep stalker hide, but then... Then again, all loot is appreciated. All loot is valuable. E well, uh, except for the <laughs> the stuff that has no value. But like, except for that, all loot is valuable. All loot is precious in my eyes. Oh, a mosaic piece. Thank you kindly. Oh, we've completed invasion. Excellent. And what's back here? Oh, hello. Okay, four out of nine, just five left. Okay, and you know what? I'm just about out of time for this episode. So we will leave off right here. In the next one, we continue exploring the tomb. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.